some rocking of sight for me from Princess and Pi about another's mercy. Be on the watch for important contacts where you least expect to find them. A friend's involvement with a man you never trusted ends in tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> Rugby. The country I can see an rugby. endless procession of Saturday afternoons at Ellis Park. You watching the police third team play. Lovely. Why are you always so bitchy about it? Rugby and Dick bore me. Well, they don't bore me. The results are due tomorrow. Do they take tests? Yesterday. Tomorrow they are out. You'll be all right, Uncle. Perhaps. Are you coming with Dick tomorrow? We didn't plan anything. He said he'd try to meet me there. <coughs> Something happened to you at the lake. What was it? One of my feet. I knew what that kid was screaming at long before he did. Something evil was there. Why me? Why must I collect it? Why can't I just see with my eyes as other people do? Why is there this curse on my family? I'm your family. It comes from mommy's side. Started with Grandmama Musha. There's a family scandal that she had been involved with Rasputin before she came here or something. I don't quite know. But I know Mum had it. Three generations of psychics in this house. As a kid, I'd have been in trouble often if it hadn't been that she knew all about it. Visitors often stared when I had conversations with people whom they didn't see. Mum told me to suppress it as much as possible. That's the trouble. It's always the evil things that I pick up. Evil is so strong. Poor George. He didn't know what he was marrying. Because the family always kept quiet about it. But he wasn't an angel. No marriage can survive clairvoyance. Anyway, ours didn't. Some philosophers say that maybe reality is much bigger than people realize. And that our brain is a valve that lets in only as much as we can stand. That's why I need the discipline of my work. Science is a beautiful world of logic. Uh, Miss Nichols? Yes? I'm Dr. Martin, Dr. Species Locum. He's suddenly been called away for a few days. I have rather bad news for you about your uncle. He hasn't? No, no, no. He's no different from yesterday. But I'm afraid you must prepare yourself for it in the near future. The tests were positive. Malignant. I'm sorry. We'll do everything to make it easy for him. Have you told him? No. People in his condition don't want to know. Well, we respect that. We do not tell them. How long has he got? Well, Dr. Spies mentioned that your uncle was always a fit man. I suppose policemen always are. Six months on the outside. I'm sorry, Miss Nichols. What else can I say? Oh, we've got company this afternoon. I must say, your niece is a faithful relation. You ought to be glad to have her. We've got people here in this hospital that never have a visitor, except perhaps on Sunday. Good heavens, Mr. Nichols. The hospital doesn't supply these with its meals. I'm sure they can't be good for you. Good heavens, more visitors. Hello, Zach. I must say, they make a beautiful couple. I'll be finished here in a minute. You carry on, nurse. I was just saying to Mr. Nichols that these can't be good for him. I shall have to ask the doctor if they are allowed. Peanuts. You know what they do to one. Mr. Nichols, at your age. <laughs> How are you feeling, Zach? Uh, so, so. I brought you these magazines. Mm -hmm. Everybody brings me magazines. They think there won't be time to finish books. I'll bring you War and Peace tomorrow. Heaven forbid. You don't have to pretend. The doc won't tell me, but he's so bloody cagey that I know. 
Anything about that girl yesterday? About as much as with the last one, which means blow all. Don't take it too hard. It's a job which one does. <laughs> Well, it gets too bad. Where will he kill again? Perhaps he's ready for suicide now. Meg says with those that kill again and again, the thrill slowly wears off. Till eventually, there's only the thrill of killing themselves. So, perhaps this one won't murder again. The last one was a student, named Ethel Croxley. Strangled again. Very smart hairstyle again. Always these hairstyles. Yes, only knowing it doesn't get us anywhere at all. Let me call a minute. No, it'll be over in a minute. Ooh. You see, I know. 
There isn't much time left. The previous murder was a week ago. Yes, Monday the 15th. Mm. They're getting close to each other. Well, Mr. Nichols, time's up. Sorry. Some other time. Radiologist will be here in a moment. He wants to give you a thorough examination. What the hell for? Hamilton's hating it. He's making the usual noises about the press, but it bugs him. He's dying to nail somebody. It's damn unfair. <laughs> what? The press or your boss? Both. Why not use Carla? What do you mean? Well, she's psychic. <laughs> she talked a bit last night before you phoned. She said that she sees things. Visions, I suppose. And she knows what's going to happen beforehand. She said that when she touches an object, she can see its owner and where he is at that moment or something. I didn't quite get it. Mm, I've heard of it. Doesn't some Hollander do it for a job? She's not keen to talk about it, but last night she did. Wrecked her marriage. If you'll excuse the disrespect, she would drive any man up the wall. Why'd you say that? Your dear cousin has some characteristics that make me view marriage into your family with some trepidation. Well, then go to hell. Damn it, haven't you got a sense of humor? You weren't joking. Ugh. Miss Nichols, you, uh... You have one hell of a temper. Uh, all right, all right. I apologize. I do not view marriage into your family with trepidation. <laughs> In fact, I, uh, I find you quite adorable. Is Carla home tonight? I think so. Damn. <laughs> you react to her as though she was your maiden aunt. Please, Dick, I'm shy of her.
Sir? Answer, damn it. What? What did you say? Why the hell didn't you answer when I called? I was listening to Ellen Radio. Ah. Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> what did you think? Well, damn it, all those murders. <laughs> oh, get away. Shouldn't you be at work? I am working. What have I done? You haven't done anything. Who has? Carla? Where is she? Varsity, I suppose. Actually, I was passing, and it's tea time. And no civil servant ever misses tea. It's all I am, a bloody convenience. If you carry on gasping tea and sandwiches like that, you'll soon have a paunch. Mm. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> when is Carla coming home? Soon, I suppose. Why the sudden interest in her? Oh, nothing in particular. Here we are. I brought it for you. What in heaven's name for? Can't I buy my fiance a present? This isn't new. Uh, second hand. You know what policemen's salaries are like. Liar. Look, if you don't like it, you can give it to Carla. What are you up to? Uh, nothing. I, uh, I just brought a scarf for one of you, that's all. I must go. Don't you want to stay? I wish I had time. Getting cold feet. Ha ha. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Did you put it there? No, Dick brought it. It's supposed to be a present. Bastard. Why? Somebody was being strangled. What? I saw it. A man strangled her. There was music. She was struggling. He has a sensitive face. Go on. Oh, it's difficult. If you hold the scarf again. No. Well, I'll do it. You all hold your hand. Is it important? Yes. It's a flat. High up. The picture. I recognize it. Seen it somewhere before. The woman, yes, a woman. Peculiar. Munich, I think. A blue blanket. He's strangling her. He's wrapping her into a blue blanket. And then water. He's dumping her near water. Hey, 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 hold it, man. I can't write shorthand. Okay. A shade of white not used on older models. 
wheelbase and the height of scratch mm, checks with fear. Yes, I've got that. Sir? Well, what is it? I've just had word from the lab. Yeah? The wheelbase measurements check with a Fiat. Shade of white not used on older models. Well, that doesn't get us much further, does it? No, sir. We'll get him. Hamilton. Yes, he's here. For you. Some woman, she says it's important. Hello? Yes? It can't wait until this afternoon. Okay, I'll come right away. Sorry, sir, I've got to go out quickly. No? The, uh, the lady who called says she has a new lead on this case. Well, fine. Report to me when you get back. That's a hell of a nice treatment. I ordered you coffee. You'll need it. You planned it. Planned what? Don't pretend. You tried to catch out. Catch who out? You didn't buy the scarf. No. Don't you think it was a dirty trick to play? Well, Dickie, it worked. What do you mean? She saw it, that's what. She saw the whole murder like on a TV screen. Nonsense. Not nonsense. She described it to me. She was play acting. She was not. Shh. People are watching. Oh, damn the people. You have all the luck in the world, because now you know how the guy looks, and you don't even recognize your luck. All right. All right. Tell me all about him. For a start, he drives a white Fiat. He's blonde, blue-eyed, tall, and wears a mustache. <laughs> oh, suit yourself. The lab has just confirmed the white Fiat bit. You see? No, she just gets lucky. You're a smug lot. You know the world and everything in it so well, you think that anything that's different is a lie. Not a lie, but suspect. Yes, everything's suspect. Everything's negative. Everything must be distrusted first. Do you know how many people have unusual powers? No. Well, close to 5%. Not like Carla. Those are rare, but... Who told you all this? She did. I thought so. Oh, I must go. Don't always run away when we disagree. No, don't worry. Joan! Joan! You haven't forgotten about the film premiere tonight? Oh, yes. The Widows and Orphans Fund. What's showing? I've forgotten. Why must we go, then? Hamilton would kill me. He's chairman of the fundraising committee. I see. Well, he is my boss. Yes, I know. 7.30 as usual. OK. Oh, did you pay for the coffee? No. I must go back. It won't break them. I'd have a bad conscience. See you tonight, then. Why right don't? You won't get anything out of him. We'll see about that. Can't you see that he's absolutely catatonic? Uh, Dr. Ballinger, I'll Listen, not Listen, the have guilty any... man is a schizophrenic. That stands out a mile. This man is not. He doesn't even look like one. According to Kretsch... Oh, I'm... bull. Well, sir, I'm back. About the lady I was... Later. Saying... Who's that? Well, that's him. Looks as if we've got our man. Picked him up quite close to where we found the girl yesterday, driving a white Fiat. He's got a record of several visits to a mental hospital. A few newspaper people will have to eat their words. Of course, that old battle axe thinks he's got the wrong man. 
She would. Town's full of psychiatrists. Why do we always have to get that woman? What do you do about it? We go through all kind of records. What else? Check with panel readers about any fee it repairs. Is that all? Then we concentrate on making a case against the suspect. And if it isn't him? We start all over again. In the meantime, he might strike again. Oh, come on, Joan. We're already late. We don't use them here, Joan. Then use an artist. Please, Joan, shh. Come on, Dick. Shut up. Some of them were by the water holes, too. I warned you to stop killing. You bastard, you think you own this country? Dr. Martin? Oh. Don't you support the Widows and Orphans Fund? Well, I, uh, I didn't know it was a garden. I, I just wanted to see the picture. Aren't you going back in? Uh, not on your life. Well, can I uh, take you anywhere? Yes. Please, if you take me home. It's a pleasure. Uh, will you wait here while I fetch my car? It's parked quite far. I'll walk with you. Good. know if I want it, really. Why not? Well, I don't need money. I needn't really work. I've just played locum since I've come back, and uh, now I'm out of work again. Don't you find doctoring fascinating? At times, but we spend so much time mucking around with the body of a person when it's really the mind we should study. You should become a psychiatrist. Uh, I read Freud once, and that was enough. This is what I'm really crazy about. Well, there's Martin Buber. Who's he? A Jewish philosopher. Evil 2 is good. It's the lowest wrong perfect goodness. What's that? Buber. It's in that book over there. It also says, the way of this world is like the edge of a blade. On this side is the underworld. And on that side is the underworld. And the way of life lies between. The one's the overworld. What's that? Well, it can't be the underworld on both sides. One must be the overworld. Because we balance in the blade in between. That's good. That's very good. Wait here. Here. What? Yours. But I hardly know you. How can I accept a present from you? Uh, nonsense. Besides, you're going to know me. Very well, in fact. Come.
the girls that you've met Better yet, keep away A heart that can feel But you know that her mind can reveal Many things that you thought were your own Sound waves could kill one, you know. You like all peaceful things. And lasting things. This one won't last long. Many happy returns. Oh, is it your birthday? Uh-uh. Oh? Oh, well, it must be somebody's birthday. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, whoever you may be. And one to a fascinating doctor. Let's leave doctors out of this. Then one to your philosopher, Martin... Boober. That's better. That's it. All the best to him. <laughs> you can use it. He's getting very old. One to Hitchcock. Well, why him? I like him. Oh. Personally? He's my dearest buddy. I'm every one of his heroines. Would you like to be a heroine? I am one. In every one of his movies. I think you deserve a toast more than anyone. To Ondine. Why? Because you look like Ondine. Who's she? The most famous water nymph in literature. <laughs> Shall I order another one? For heaven's sake, no. Come on. Hmm? Okay. I told you it was a long way to the car. I'll take you to the door. Rather not. Why not? Because it would be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I'd better come. Rubbish. I can stand on one leg. Bye. So late? So clumsy and expensive. Did you like the phone? So so. Mm. 
liar. What do you mean? Sherlock Holmes pitched up here earlier tonight. He told me you'd run away. Oh, hell. I told him that was the best thing you'd done since your engagement. What did he do? He went to look for you. Oh. And you? I knew you were fine. Did you see what I did? No. But I knew you were all right. Who was he? Didn't you even see that? No. Dr. Martin. Is he nice? Yes. Very nice. Meg. Lying in a hospital bed. What sort of funny habits are these? Yes. But I'm pretty sick, Meg. So they said. Yes. I was going to retire to the South Coast. But they have the nicest golf course. And I was going to write my memoirs. <laughs> What's the bloody use? I won't write them now. Well, that's no loss, Zach. These old policemen's memoirs are dreadfully boring. And the well-known murder cases? Rubbish, Zach. You know they're not important. <laughs> Good old man. You haven't got any more tact for. Tact I reserve for weaklings. You've always been a man. That's why I like you. <laughs> You're a tonic, Meg. Read this, Zach. It'll make it easier. Mm, that's pretty thick. You'll get through it. Perhaps. You will. He says that survival after death is scientifically proved. And if it were any other fact, it would be generally accepted. That's pretty radical. I agree. My own researchers have confirmed it. <laughs> I suspected you were playing around with such things. Not playing around. It's all pretty scientific. At least as far as things of the human mind can be scientific. <laughs> No wonder Hamilton is always fighting with you. Hamilton's an old fool. <laughs> and yet, I don't seem to be able to die just yet. In the back of my mind, I feel that I must still do something. What can an old wreck like me still do in a bloody hospital bed? You can, Zach. I'll help you. What? First of all, you must know that the fear you feel is of your own making. Death is an experience, perhaps the most interesting experience in our life. You think so, Meg? Yes, Zach, I think so. Once you have conquered fear, you will be able to experience death in full consciousness. And I want you to help me. And from now on, record all your thoughts and feelings about dying, right to the moment of death. And dream, Zach, especially dreams. You know, he died. He tried to trace out with his finger on the bedclothes what was happening to him. We can do better. I brought you pencil and paper. And when you get too weak to write, we'll use a tape recorder. You're mad, Meg. No, no, no. Imagine what it'll mean to people to know how it feels to pass over. It'll truly become a homecoming. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't be. Come in. I've got to go anyway. Remember, Zach, you've always been tough. I am too. We can do it together. Hello, Uncle Zack. You came alone? Where's Dick? I don't know. Hmm? Is anything the matter? A fight? Oh, nothing. Sometimes I wish he wasn't such a stuffed shirt. He's not really. At times he is. And sometimes I think that a lifetime's a hell of a long time. Oh, come on. Oh, let's not talk about it anymore. Have you seen Dr. Martin today? Dr. Martin? The locum. Oh, him. No, Dr. Spiss is back. Oh. Hello, Zach. How's things, Dick? Fine. How are you feeling, Zach? You haven't kissed your fiance? She can go to... Dick! I'm sorry. Come on. Make up and forget. Uh, she thinks she can walk out of me and in, in front of Hamilton. And then she stays out half the night and... I was worried to death. <laughs> yes, terribly. You couldn't shut an eye in the car in front of the house. Hold it, children. Come on, you both grown-ups. I demand an apology. Ha, 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 ha. Come on, make it up for my sake. Don't waste any of your time on quarrelling. It's short enough as you get to know only too well in my condition.
You. <laughs> Anything new about your suspect? He was always out of institutions when the murders were committed. It's no proof. It makes him a possibility. Can't Carla see him? What for? Well, she'd recognize him if he was the murderer. Mm. That wouldn't prove anything either. Can you see Hamilton's face when I tell him that this, this woman had a, had a vision? Well, she has. And isn't it your duty to try every possibility? You don't know Hamilton. He even laughs at Freud. What does Meg Ballinger think? She doesn't believe it's him. Which makes Hamilton try all the harder to nail him. Do you mean that a man can hang because of their antagonism? Nothing has happened yet. But is it possible? Not likely. A case of circumstantial evidence has to be built up, and it's got to be pretty good before it goes to court. But is it possible? Nothing is not possible. Come on, Joan. Nothing will happen to him if he's not the man. We must have a picture made of that face. Ah, that's an idea. What do you say, Dick? <laughs> It won't convince Hamilton. Oh, every second word of yours is Hamilton. Joan! Come on, Dick. Let's try it. I didn't know you believed in that stuff, Zach. I don't. But something Meg Ballinger said made me think. Let's try it anyway. What can we lose? There is a pattern emerging which makes us all assume that the four murders were committed by the same person. The fact that they were strangled and so on. But there is also a more hidden pattern. Take the places where the bodies were found. The first one near a small private irrigation dam. Significant, because the second body was found near a mine dam, again near water. And the others were found near water as well. The impulse to murder in this type of case is invariably buried deep in the unconscious. This doesn't mean that the murderer is always unconscious of what he is doing, but that the impulse arises from the unconscious mind. A characteristic of the unconscious mind is that it works in symbols. The water theme has a symbolic significance for the murderer. What do we use water for? Certainly for washing. And for baptizing, which is a form of washing, washing our sins away. It seems that the murderer regrets his deed after he's done it. He places the body near the water so that it may symbolically wash his deed away. Yes, I'm sure that's going to help us a great deal, Doctor. Thank you very much. Richard, I want to see you in my office when you're finished with Dr. Ballinger. This murderer murders out of fear. All the victims were girls. That points to a man. It would be a man who is afraid of women, but he loves them too. Otherwise, he wouldn't always look for a new one. He is in a constant state of ambivalence. And ambivalence is a characteristic of schizophrenia. Come in. Hello, Richard. Hello, Carla. This is Dr. Ballinger, our psychiatrist. Dr. Ballinger, this is Miss Carla Nichols. Ah, the lady for the pictures. I find this absolutely fascinating. I've studied the psychic phenomena for years. Come, let's go to the other office. We'll be undisturbed there. <laughs> Are you crackers, Richard? From a clairvoyant? It's OK to be keen on your job, but to dabble in sorcery. You've used them overseas. Well, they do a hell of a lot overseas that we won't tolerate. But we don't work that way, we deal in facts. No man is guilty until the facts make him so. We've got science on our side. Don't need this mumbo-jumbo. Particularly as we've got our man already. But that's not fair. Oh, come on, Richard. Don't waste my time. There you are. Home so late. Took longer than I expected. Well, there he is. Frustrating to try to describe a face in words. Yes. help you. Is Joan in? Wait in the lounge. He's here. Who? The man. The man from your vision? How did you know? I recognize the picture. What does he want with you? 
He's come to fetch me for lunch. Why did nothing warn me? Because I wasn't in any danger. How can we get rid of him? We're not. I'm going with him. Joan, I beg of you. Nothing's going to happen to me in a public place. You can ring Dick if you like. We'll follow you. Hello. Hello. Well, let's go. Where to? Blue Lake? No, the place we went to the other night was nice. Lily Lane. Okay. Have so you met my cousin, Carla Nichols? How do you do? How do you do? Well, shall we go? Fine. Extension 365, please. Please let him in. Grant here. Richard. Carla. Richard, something terribly important has happened. Well, what is it? I can't tell you over the phone. I've got to go. Please go to the Lily Marlene. Right away. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Where the hell could they be? He said quite clearly, Lily Marlene. She's mad to go with him. All right. Now's the time to use your... your powers. I have to be relaxed for that. You bloody pony. I'll kill you if anything happens to her. Come on. You're crude like all policemen. Try. Come spontaneously. I can't order it. All right. Let's leave that bloody nonsense and do it my way. Where did they say they'd go? I told you, to the Lily Marlene. Straight away? Yes. Why are you hesitating? I don't remember. Come on, nervous. think! And you let her go with him. I tell you, my girl, if anything should happen, I'll... Zule. What? They also mentioned Zule. Come on! Then why did you come with me? Because I wanted to. <laughs> Women aren't inventive. You think I came because... You attract me. Oh, that's clear enough. <laughs> There's more. Curiosity. And I touched a level that you didn't know you possessed. What do you mean? I showed you that I understood. Understood what? You. And that gives me power. Power? Over you. For instance, I could make you cry in two minutes. I'm not the crying type, and I have my emotions in control. Some things are stronger than control. Try me. If you were a simple girl, I'd kiss you. I'd do something natural. But you're not. You've overcome conventions to a certain extent, so... I won't do anything. I'm curious. Does a woman ever refuse a challenge? But you said you didn't want to kiss me. Extraordinary. You reduce everything to the kiss. If I'd kiss you, you'd offend yourself, then less, then even less, and finally abandon yourself. But that's not good enough for me. I love you more than that. If I retain that kiss in my head, I can elaborate it, turn it, twist it, meditate on it, and arrive at complexity and lust. 
I don't understand. Naturally. If you understood, you'd be frightened. Frightened of what? My hand, for instance, which is already touching you. You touched me? Only in the imagination. <laughs> oh, it's all nonsense. Do you want me to do away with words? In love, that's another way. What are you talking about? In love? Oh, yes. At this moment, I love you, and you offered yourself to me. You're mad. Perfect. A little withdrawal before surrender. But why run away? Hey, I, hey, I know this guy. I had an uncanny feeling when I first saw the picture. Stanley. Nick, old boy. Stanley, that's it. Long time no see. Meet Miss Nichols. Uh, Joan. How do you do, uh, Miss Nichols? He met her when he came to fetch me. Well, we were just going to have lunch. Will you join us? With pleasure. I thought you were still in England. Uh, when did you get back? About six months ago. I thought you were going to stay there. I didn't like it anymore. We went to school together. Same class, even. Yes, it's been quite a few years. Yes. Still. Yes, it's, um, it's quite a long time. Well, this, uh, this is a surprise. What are you doing? Uh, looking at your tires. Well, what's so interesting on them? The, the trademark. The universals. Oh. <laughs> You're crazy. Actually, I came to apologize for yesterday. Why? I shouldn't have been so forward. It doesn't matter. As a peace offering. Would you come to the theater with me tonight? I don't... UNESCO. I don't know. Please. All right. Fine. I'll pick you up at 7.30. Stanley was here. I know. I met him outside. There's a scratch on his car. So it is him. Is it? He asked me to a play tonight. You refused. I said I'd go. Are you mad? I'm confused. I don't know what to do. I wish I was more certain of this thing. It wouldn't help anyway. Why? Because nobody takes your vision seriously, no matter how certain you are. And Dick's the worst now that he's found an old school pal. And you? I believe you, Carla. But how can I be sure if even you want? Nobody takes me seriously. Because people are afraid of new things. New facts are always a threat to stability. So we'd rather deny the existence of anything new. We'd rather hang an innocent man than admit that there are things we don't understand. Why? Hamilton's holding a suspect. Didn't Dick tell you? We don't talk more than is absolutely necessary. Anyway, I'm going to do something about it. It can't go on like this. A crisis must come. Sue? He's driving me crazy. And the faithful Sherlock Holmes? I can't help it. I hate myself for it, but I just can't help it. Ah, the fascination of the killer. He's not the killer. He could be, dear cousin. He could be. Oh, I can't stand the uncertainty any longer. You're saddled with it, so you better believe. What? My vision. Safer. I don't want safety. I want certainty. You might find out with a twisted neck. <sighs> Let's go away together on a trip. That wouldn't help anyway. A long holiday. Until you have clarity about your feelings. And by then they may have caught him. That wouldn't work. What about Uncle Zach? What about him? We can't leave him now. Think of yourself sometimes. No, we can't leave him now. 
I can't run away from Stanley and I, I can't feel any more with Richard. I just don't know any more. Please help me, Carla. How? Think of something to break the uncertainty. I've seen. It's not enough. Prove it. It's impossible. It isn't. There is a way. What way? I have an idea that must work. Will you help? One oh five. Are you the superintendent? Yes. Well, Mrs. Sachs. Mrs. Sachs, we need your help. Do you know Dr. Stanley Martin? He lives here. Yes. Flat 75, seventh floor. Well, it's his birthday today. Oh, I wish I'd known. I'd have put some flowers in his flat. Well, that's why we came, actually. An old school friend of Dr. Martin's would like to surprise him. Stanley has invited my cousin to the theater. And while he's away, this school friend would like to get into the flat and prepare a little party for him. And you want me to open the flat for him? That's right. I can't just let anybody into a tenant's flat. I don't think you'll have to worry, Mrs. Sachs. Dr. Martin's friend is a policeman. All right. If he identifies himself, I will let him in. Thank you very much. And don't forget, it's supposed to be a surprise. I won't tell him. Bye. Goodbye. And now we phone Richard. You know, I'd rather write him a note. Why? I don't want any arguments. By the time he gets home tonight, we'll already be at the theatre. Well, why does he get in so late? It's his day for rugby practice. Are you sure he'll go? Of course. You like it? Yes, very nice. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good. Well, the other night you showed me your scene. Now this is mine. Food, wine, and a good play. <laughs> You'll probably think this is crazy. You know, when he wrote his first play, he thought he was writing a tragedy. And then he read it to his friends. And they doubled up with laughter. <laughs> Hello? No, this is not 50629. No, no. No, it's not. All right. Fine. All right. We'll take some simpler examples. If you had two noses and I'd plucked one off, how many would you have left? None. What do you mean, none? Well, it's just because you haven't plucked one off that I've still got one. If you had plucked it off, <laughs> it wouldn't be there anymore. <laughs> you didn't quite understand my example. Suppose you only had one ear. Yes, and then? I stick on another one, how many would you have? Two. Good. I stick yet another one on, how many would you have? Three ears. I take away one, how many ears do you have left? Two. Good. I take away another one, how many do you have left? Two. No, no, no. You have two ears, I take away one. I nibble one off, how many do you have left? Two. I nibble one of them off, one of them. Two. One. Two. One. Two. One. Two. No, 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 that's not it at all. The example isn't convincing enough. Listen to me. Hi there. Is that you, Uncle Zach? Yes. Carla. Heavens, girl, you're ringing me. I can't stand it any longer, Uncle Zach. I need your advice. You sound agitated. Uncle Zach, uh, Joan and I have done... We're trying to trap him. Trap whom? Dr. Martin. Why should you trap him? Well, he's the murderer of all these women. What? Haven't you seen the picture? Oh, hell, is that who it was? Well, you girls better not get involved any further. It's too late. She's out with him tonight. Tonight? Couldn't you stop her? The hell? Can't she still be stopped? 
Where is she? They're at the Blue Fox now. Where's Dick? He's supposed to be at Dr. Martin's flat. Thank heavens for that. Are you sure he's there? No. Well, damn it, make sure about it. All right. Please hurry and do something about it. Engaged. He's at home. the Neo-Spanish languages from the other and separates them from other linguistic groups, such as the group comprising the Austrian and Neo-Austrian or Habsburgian languages, or such groups as the Esperantists, Heliotic, Monegasque, Swiss, Andorran, Basque, Pelota, not to speak of the diplomatic and technical language groups. What distinguishes them, I say, is their striking resemblance to each other, so that it is extremely difficult to keep them apart. Here's one, mademoiselle. It's a pity it's the only one, but we'll try to make it do for all the languages. All you have to do is to stare closely at it and imagine it belongs to the language you're using. I've got the duvet! Come on, then. Duvet. Say nigh, like nigh, and... And watch it carefully. Don't take your eyes off it. Oh, right, nice. Say it again, nice. Be nice. Be nice. Nice, 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 How did you like it? I'll need a lesson to find out what it's all about. <laughs> well, I could give you one right now. Coffee included? Mm-hmm. Where? What's wrong with the lion's den? My flat? Yes. Let's go. Please call a taxi. Quickly, please. Good night, sister. Good night, doctor. Your night, cat. Hey. Quite what you expected. I inherited it all from my mother. Now one day I'll break away and get rid of it all. Not my choice either. But my art teacher was crazy about it at school. Gave a copy to each one in the class when we left. <laughs> I bet Richard has one too. Oh, this sentimentality of mine.
way to. Oh, I must get hold of a telephone book. I'll take you to a booth. I heard you calling somebody. Uh, I was calling your cat. I don't have a cat. I'm sure I saw one. Interested in tires, sees cats. I think having a detective for an uncle has made you a great romantic. Mother? Most girls have the ability to become one. Oh, come on, let me do that. Are you baiting me by being domestic? Why? Well, you know what bait is. A preparation that renders the hook more palatable. The best kind is beauty. It's a compliment. Relax. Seventy-five, things we mentioned. I sometimes feel like opening a practice just to get away from the boredom, but it would soon become a prison. <laughs> Talking about myself again. Would you like to hear some music? Only classical music in this household, I'm afraid. Let's try and dance to it anyway. Oh! Ah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let's do it the old way. What's the matter? Nothing. Come on. Let's have that drink now.
Cheers. Like it? Going phone to Hamilton quickly. Two six nine three eight. One shouldn't do anything that one can't talk about after dinner. As Oscar Wilde said. Hey. What's the matter? Nothing. You look so vulnerable. You've got lovely hair. Why do you put it into such an artificial... <laughs> Kingsway Mansion. Please, it's urgent. Yeah. We, uh, we got the strangler. Did you? I've just come from Central Lake. We found another woman. Strangled.